What's happening guys? Today we're going to learn all about sun flares, how to create them, and a little trick I like to use if things aren't quite lining up perfectly. What's happening guys? My name is Brendan from BeWillCreative.com, home to editing tutorials, camera gear reviews, tricks and tips to make photo and photo editing a whole lot easier. Now before we get started on this video, I hope everybody had a great New Year's and a great holiday, and I hope you guys didn't gain as much weight as I did. So in today's video, we're going to talk all about sun flares, how to create them in camera, and a cool trick that I like to use to make my sun flares perfect even if the shooting conditions weren't quite right. In today's video, I'll be talking about a few settings and things to remember when you're wanting to create sun flares, but since I'm not getting fully in depth to it today, I also wrote a blog post all about it on BeWillCreative.com, which gives you a step-by-step -step guide to create the perfect sun flares every time. So you can find the link to that article down below. So the first thing to remember when you're shooting sun flares is that it's all about your aperture. Now your aperture is that little thing inside of your lens that opens and closes to dictate how much light is coming through your lens and hitting your sensor. Now depending on the size of your aperture, that's going to dictate the depth of field, which is how much is in focus at one time, and it's also going to affect the brightness and the darkness in your image. Now if you're totally new to that whole thing, that might be a little confusing, so here is a little infographic to make life easy. Notice at one end of the f-stop range, there is more light available, but there's less stuff in focus. So if we look at the cats down below here, we notice the front one is in focus, but the back one is blurry. And that's because we have a wider aperture and that means that we're going to have a shallower depth of field aka less is in focus. Now going to the other end of the range, we have a smaller, more of like a pinhole aperture, but now both the cats are in focus because we have a larger depth of field, but there is less light coming through the lens and hitting the camera sensor because there's a smaller hole for the light to pass through. So I get it, you're probably wondering, why are we talking about apertures? I just wanna learn about lens flares. Well, the thing is, you can't have a lens flare without the right aperture setting. So once you understand aperture settings, you have to remember the perfect aperture range for great sun flares. To get those perfect sun flares like you see in professional photos, you'll need to shoot at an aperture of f11 or higher, aka an aperture between f11 and f22. Now some photographers absolutely hate to shoot at these higher apertures because they say it looks too sharp or it degrades the quality of their image. Yes, it makes things a little more sharp, but it doesn't degrade the quality of your image. So people who say that are, are I don't know, that doesn't make sense to me. But just remember that is the perfect range for sun flares, f11 to f22. Now depending on the f-stop that you decide to use in your photo, it's going to dictate how the sun flare looks. At f11, it's going to look a little bit more soft versus at f22, it's going to look really sharp, really crisp, and it's going to be extremely defined. So it kind of depends what you're wanting to go for. Personally, I really like to have my sun flares a little bit softer, not completely sharp and crispy. So I like to shoot at about f16 and the result that I get from that really works well for me. So now that we have the perfect aperture setting for great sun flares, we need to talk about how to get the sun flares to really pop and come to life like we're wanting. So of course you can just shoot straight at a light source or the sun and it's going to have a flare effect of some kind. But in my opinion, these light flares look the best when they're hidden behind some kind of edge like a horizon or a rock a tree, whatever it might be. Hey, that rhymed. When you hide that light source behind an edge, it, the flare ends up wrapping around those dark areas of the edge, and it creates a really cool effect that brings more attention to the light flare. So whenever you're shooting, you've picked that right aperture for your sun flare. What I like to do is just dance around and find a perfect spot until there's just a little bit of light poking through behind my edge. You might be surprised how little light you need to create a really epic sun flare. For me, when I'm trying to create the perfect sun flare, I tried two different angles and positions just until I can get the perfect size flare that I'm looking for. Now, the thing with sun flares is sometimes you'll set up your composition and you'll love the shot, but sometimes the sun isn't quite working with you. Maybe it's diffused behind some bushes, you can't quite see it behind an edge, or something like that. So you don't want to fix your composition, but you really want that sun flare in there. So I'm going to show you some examples of exactly that situation and a trick that I like to use to get that perfect sun flare, even if the conditions aren't allowing me to get it. So let's hop into the computer and start doing some photo editing magic. So now we're in the Photoshop kitchen and we're gonna start cooking up some light ray goodness. So I have two separate images here that I shot while in Tofino. I have this image, which is my base image shot at f8, and obviously it does not have a sun flare. Now looking at my other image here, I shot this one at f13, which has a much more pronounced sharp sun flare that we're looking for. So I wanna add this sun flare 
into this image that's a little bit softer at f8. So the reason that there was no sun flare in this original photo is because one, the sun just wasn't quite lining up for me. It wasn't perfectly behind the trees like I was wanting and I didn't want to move my camera from the composition so I had to do this in two separate shots. So after I took this photo I moved my camera ever so slightly just so I could get that nice flare at f13. So luckily this whole process is super easy and it only takes about a minute once you get the whole thing dialed in. So the first thing that you'll be doing is on your sun flare image you're going to grab your rectangular marquee tool by pressing M on your keyboard and we're just going to make a selection around our sun flare making sure that we get all of those little light streaks in our selection. So that looks pretty good to me there. And now I'll unlock my layer and then press Command or Control J with that active selection. And now I'll have it on its own layer. So I'll just call this to Sun Flare. Now with that new marquee selection on its own layer, I'm gonna grab my Move tool by pressing V and click and drag that over into my other image that I wanna add the Sun Flare into. Luckily, since I didn't have to move my tripod too much, it was only about a foot or so, it won't be too hard to align everything in the image, but depending on how much you had to move the camera, this step might take a little bit longer. I'm just going to line this up with the tree because this is this main tree is the most obvious part here, so I'll just make sure that that trunk is all lined up. So looking here, that looks pretty spot on to me. And now we have to get rid of all this dark area. So the first thing that we can do is we can add a layer mask and then mask out some of the edges so we don't have that rectangular box around our photo anymore. So I'll add a layer mask to my sun flare layer. I'll grab my brush tool and with a 100% black brush at 100% opacity, I'm going to just paint around the edges, masking out any of those harsh edges that were left over from our marquee tool but taking care not to get rid of any of the sun flare burst arm things whatever you want to call those taking care not to get rid of any of that but just getting rid of those harsh edges so that looks pretty good to me there now the next thing that we can do is use our blend if slider now our blend if slider will help us to get rid of the dark areas while keeping the bright areas of the sun flare so to access your blend if sliders, you can double click on your sun flare layer. Your layer style dialog box will come up here. And right down here under blending options, you'll see blend if. We're going to leave it set to gray. And on the this layer slider, we're just going to drag up the shadows area just a little here until you notice that it starts to take away some of the dark areas around the edges. Now if you missed it, just look really close right here. I'm going to move it back and then I'm going to drag that down just a little and see how we're starting to lose the tips of our sun flare. We want to bring it back just a little so all of our sun flare is still there. Now we want to feather this out a little so I'm going to hold alter option, click on that and we'll now split that out to feather it out a little more. And now we can see our sun flare is by itself without all the dark areas around it like before. So turning that on and off you can see the difference that is made there. We have a little bit too much dark area left over. So I'm just going to click on my layer mask, grab my brush tool painting black once again, and I'm going to continue to mask out those dark areas that I don't want to see anymore. So now after a little bit of masking, I have gotten my sun flare to a point that I'm really happy with. It's almost completely unnoticeable that we have added it in from another photo. All we had to do is mask out those harsh areas from the marquee tool and then use our blend if sliders to make our sun flare blend even better into our image. Now if you're totally new to the blend if sliders, you want to know more about them and how they work, I've already done a tutorial all about them. I'll leave a link for that down below so you can learn more about the blend if sliders, how they work, and how you can apply them into your photo editing. But with that, we have now completed this image, we've put the sun flare in, and we can start doing our overall color edits that we want to do. Alright guys, so if you enjoyed today's video, make sure to hit that like button as it really does make a difference, and also consider subscribing to stay up to date with more tutorials like this one. Now before I end this video, I wanted to let you know about my new photography ebook, updated for 2020. So if you want to get access to that, you want to improve your photography fast with great tips and tricks that I use to really elevate my photo game, then make sure to get that free download via the link in the description below. And by downloading the ebook and subscribing to BeWillCreative.com, you'll get some awesome free tutorials straight to your inbox every week. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on creating sun flares in camera using the right settings and a cool trick that you can use in post to get those sun flares into any of your photos that you want. Anyways guys, my name is Brendan from BeWillCreative.com. You can find me on Instagram 
at burnwills. And with that, I'll catch you back here next time. See you then.